All right, uh, I'm here at Data Innovation Summit and look who I have with me, Somil Gupta, founder and CEO of Algorithmic Scale. Uh, first of all, I think we've been connected on LinkedIn since uh, yes, forever. Yes, for, yeah, and, yes, yes. Uh, it's so good to meet you in person. Good to have you here in Stockholm. I, is, I'm, yeah, but it's really good that you are here and then you guys are uh, in Data Innovation Summit. It's one of right. the biggest events in, the, in Nordics. Yes. So it's really, really cool. And great energy, like uh, in the morning itself when I was uh, just trying to enter the conference hall and I'm like, oh my God, look at the queue. And the energy that Stockholm has is fantastic. The data and AI community here is huge. Yeah. And so we had to be here covering the event. Uh, it's so nice to be here and obviously it's almost end of the day one. And I've been seeing you doing sessions all day. I uh, would definitely love to know yep. about what you've been hearing and all of those things. But just for our audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Absolutely. Tell us a little about Algorithmic Scale and what have you been working on? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so I'm the founder and CEO of Algorithmic Scale. And uh, what, what we do is we work on everything around AI and we work on everything that you need to create value out of AI. So a lot of people talk about data to value and uh, value realization, but it's not that simple because right. if you have to look at it, it's first of all, in the end, it's gonna be a person who is using it, and your AI is as good as the person who is using it. Right. And in the end, uh, AI is just one of the components of the solution. You need to work with your processes, you need to work with your people, with your products, your business model, operating model. Right. So there's a lot of stuff that we do uh, that feeds into the uh, the AI model. Very so basically working with the metrics, the data, the, the data products, and what exactly are we modeling, uh, you know? So data models, you work on that. Uh, the business objects, yes. and then how do you basically uh, then consume the inferences? So we look at, uh, like I call it the three fits. So one is the data problem fit, how good your data is with respect to the problem you're trying to solve. What is the model process fit? So uh, how does the model fit into the process? Right. And then the, the product market fit, the how does, what problem you're solving and is it worth solving? Or should you solve it or not, right? right. So that's what we do uh, in, in total, uh, yeah. This is fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, definitely a problem that needs to be solved at various layers as well. But I know you closely also work with a lot of CEOs, yep. CXOs, and you go back and you know obviously bring a lot of strategy to their game. Would you like to share a little about the challenges that currently that you've been listening and you've been solving for uh, these CXOs out there? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that, that's that's like the one thing that is uh, quite uh, exciting, and that it's, it's a bit might be a bit challenging for the data community to understand this, but when you are talking to a vice president or a CXO or uh, a finance controller, they don't really care about the tech. Uh, right. They have a very simple question. Okay, uh, how much money are you asking for? Uh, what problem you're gonna solve? And when are we gonna get that money back? Uh, right. And, 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 and uh, how much? So when you start putting that in that kind of a frame, you to, we, to, we look at the value, cost, and risk as a very simple framework. Right. And everything has to fit into it. That means we have to look at different aspects of uh, change management, for example, the processes, the, uh, the people, and right. what I find a little bit, uh, I think it's changing a bit because we had a few sessions which talk about ROI and we talk about the value. I think that's where the conversation has to drive. Technology is great and I mean, I'm an engineer by training so I love technology. Yes. But then we also need some kind of shift towards uh, the, business. The, the business and the value right. conversation yeah. and why are we doing this and things like this. I think that's what uh, is, that's what we are kind of hearing, getting towards. Uh, and of course, it's a question of leadership because AI leadership is still like a big question. Big question, right? Uh, how do we, how do we take better decisions? How do we take better, uh, you know? Uh, how do we develop future capabilities? How do we develop future right. competences? I think that's what uh, the conversation is about with, with the CXOs uh, and and the vice president most of the time. Yeah, no, I think uh, it's uh, you know you've nailed it in terms of you know talking about you know having the technical knowledge is good, but who's going to talk about? you know, about how the business is yeah. and how the business leaders think. Because you are at the forefront talking to all of these guys yep. and uh, you are really trying to make them understand the problem, but at the same time also giving them the solution uh, and bringing that ROI that they're looking for. Yes. So it becomes super interesting for, uh, you know, uh, at least for our audience to learn about, okay, AI and the tech is good, but who's going to uh, talk a little about the business? And I think you're kind of doing that, so which is Yes, yeah, I think we started about this conversation, uh, I think six years ago, and I think wow. now, um, 
So that was the first time I, I spoke about uh, ROI, and it was a bit challenging for the audience to kind of understand it. Like, why should we? Why, why are we talking about it? Is, shouldn't we just do AI? Yeah. Uh, but okay. I think six years down. Uh, one interesting thing is when you look at. Uh, so the, when you look at deployment, when you look at the, uh, you know, uh, everything to do with the tech, tech problems, I think that we have nailed already. And a lot of people now, we have very good at operations, we know that. But I was looking at a report, I'm going to share that tomorrow in my, in my presentation. Awesome. When we look at things like uh, competing on data and AI, when we look at things like um, drive, uh, managing data as a business asset, uh, data-driven culture, data-driven organization, we're actually going backwards. And that's what, that's what they say. So we started with 47%, now we have 40%. We started with 27%, now we're at under 20%. So we are actually going backward in some of these competence areas. I think that's, there is, that's why there's a need to kind of refocus because we don't want another AI winter. We really want to kind of, you know, uh, go, go with this momentum. And what has happened in the last five years, and I've seen some of these cases where companies have actually uh, kind of asked, okay, we have been building the platform. We have been doing some investment. Where is the value? What problem have you solved? So right. I think that conversation uh, comes back sometime uh, sooner or later, and then you know now with the interest is being higher, you know, people are are, are asking questions. <laughs> right. So yeah. So I think it's for everyone, all of us, to kind of start, uh, maybe have a reflection on why we are doing what we are doing, and of course we should use technology. I'm very pro, pro technology. Wow. And uh, find good users for it. Yes. So. I, I, I think that's a fine balance that we need to find yes. and once you kind of find that, it's going to be a good win-win situation not only from the business point of view but also for the technology and those who are in the space uh, in AI and in data yes. Yes. doing the technical things. Uh, it's like bringing them together and you, you are probably bridging that gap for them where yeah, uh, I mean, sometimes you also, or I'm pretty sure you also have instances where you're kind of going out and talking to the technical teams and telling them that, okay, this is what the expectation looks like. I'm not sure, but maybe. Yeah, but no, this is, this yes. is, this is exactly what it is. So we kind of uh, become like a bridge between yes. the, 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 the business teams and the, uh, and the data teams. Uh, defining what needs to be done. Right. Uh, so it, 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 it's like, a, I say, it's, it's a balance, right? So sometimes you have to clarify things to the data, the, the, the data teams, but sometimes you also have to educate the business. The business Right, leaders. because you, they right. can't like keep working the way they have been working and expect AI to work with it. That's not gonna happen. So they have to change the ways of working. I think what has happened really well with generative AI is that a lot more people have gotten in touch with what AI is in a very, very kind of a tangible way because they could touch and feel it. Right. And I have seen the conversation changing uh, from should we invest in AI to okay, uh, are we capable of handling it? Oh, wow. which is a good question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, coming from the top, I think that's a really, really good question that they're thinking in the right direction. Love it. But it's instead of you know obviously just pressing into AI, they are they are now being aware about is it really that we have the capacity to yes, uh, yes, make yes. that happen and you know, win in that direction. So, which is fantastic. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure our audience would also want to reach out to you. I know you're quite active on LinkedIn. So, just for our audience, would you like to tell us where can they reach out to you, learn more about, you know, what are you doing? I'm, I'm, I know you share a lot of content on LinkedIn as well. So, where can they educate uh, themselves from your content? I, I think LinkedIn is one like my go-to kind of because I kind of you know, born uh, in LinkedIn, <laughs> uh, you know, so one of the, the those guys. But uh, yeah, and then we also have our website uh, www.algorithmicscale.com, so you can also find some content there. And there's a lot of content. I think uh, the interesting thing which I find is that the stuff that we're talking about, the process re-engineering, we're talking about this, this is not a new thing. It has been there, believe it or not, for more than 50 years. Right. But now it is becoming important because we are questioning the basic premise. We are questioning the basic uh, you know, ways of working. We are getting into a paradigm shift where what we know is not no longer kind of carry us through. So we have to start thinking, why are we doing it again? And I am kind of, I feel a lot of things that we do is a vestige of uh, the industrial era. Right. We still have those processes and things like this, which actually come from that uh, kind of a mindset. We need to change our mindset. The problem is we don't have a vocabulary yet to describe what the new way is, but I think that's where the, the next step, at least for me, is, is to define what the new way is. Everyone wants to have a digital transformation. What are you going to transform into? Right. 
right? right. So exactly. that that is a question that I think we need to engage the broader community, and I think everybody has to be part of it. It's not just us, me or you. It's just the we need the data community, we need a business community, we need the leadership. Everyone has to be right. part of that. Redefine this new language, and right. hopefully then we can talk to to one another. Yeah. in a in a good way <laughs> exactly no i think uh, this is such a great point and uh, definitely for those who are interested to learn more about these things uh, samuel gupta is out there and uh, he's very approachable and very nice to have uh, you know answer all the questions that you might have so absolutely. feel free to absolutely. reach out to him but uh, it was such a pleasure to host you on the it was a pleasure show. having you over here robert yeah. thank yeah. you very much right. and uh, definitely looking forward to keeping our conversation going and uh, i hope the day 2 is pretty interesting yes looking forward to it now awesome thank you very much <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.